Okay, this week when I was off in a three-day uh, corporate meeting, they did a little thing called an icebreaker. Icebreakers is to get people involved with people, you know, so that we can kind of relate and be one and, you know, all that. And we did a little exercise that I actually had to experience, which actually gave me a little bit of insight into another matter. So I'm going to show just shortly the, the demonstration of the exercise, and uh, we'll just cheat a little bit here, but, and then I'm going to make the application from that. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to um, close your eyes. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk to you, and, and I know you kind of already know what this room looks like, but I'm going to lead you, okay, and I'm going to lead you that forward direction, and I'm going to try to make sure that you don't fall over chairs, trip over people, those kinds of things. But you only get to listen to my voice for the moment, okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take, uh, start walking forward, slowly. Okay, keep going, slowly. Okay. Stop. Step right just a little bit. Uh, step left just a little bit. Step forward, slowly. Step left a little bit. Forward. 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 Step right a little bit. Step a little more. Go forward. Go a little left. Forward. Forward. Keep your eyes closed. Forward. Keep going. All right. You're going to get towards something here. I want you to stop. Reach out. Reach up. Reach up. Whoops. Well, we're going to help a little bit here because this fell down and it shouldn't have. Grab that. Okay. okay, now I would like you to turn around completely. Your eyes are still closed, right? Okay. Interesting, huh? Okay. Stop. Start walking forward. That's right. Keep walking forward. Walking forward. Walking forward. Stop. Move to the left a little bit. Move forward. Move to the right a little bit. Move forward. Move to the left a little bit. A little left a little bit again. We're stop. There you go. Forward. Keep going. A little bit to the left. Forward. And stop. Now put your right hand down to the right of you. Stop. Now turn around. Now this time, the exercise said, we don't get to talk. I have to get you down that same path without a word. I have to lead by some other means. And I learned a valuable lesson about leading at this point. Okay, how do you get somebody from point A to point B without words? And that got me thinking when I came home about how God leads. See, God has to work out a relationship between the one he's leading in a way that they understand what he's doing for those times when he doesn't seem to be speaking. So what we learned was this. Okay, close your eyes. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's going to mean forward. That's going to mean left. And that's going to mean right. Ready? Mm
Now, there's two things I learned about the leading of God in this exercise. You can open your eyes. First of all, the total trust that has to exist between the one being led and the one leading. Two, having to learn as the leader to watch and adjust for the habits of the one being led. You notice how turn right, turn left sometimes got you this. Sometimes it got you a full this. We don't react. We don't all react identically. We actually react differently to commands. And so you have to learn what's going on. So God has to actually pay attention to us to know what we can handle and what we can't and how we're going to react to given commands that he gives us. And for those times when he can't just come down and say, you, left, he's already worked out with your spirit Still small voice things going on inside that go, pay attention here, pay attention there. Look a little here, look a little there, stop. Go a little forward, go a little back, go a little forward, go a little, stop, forward, left, right, left, right. When we did this exercise, we actually had to go down a very long building, go several corners down, go in and out of rooms, we had to go around objects, and people who were coming the other direction who were also blind. Because we had to actually wear masks. And I just kept thinking about it. It was so interesting to me after, after the experience was over. Because you had to learn quickly how to relate to the one leading. And you had to relate quickly to your own self. What made you secure when walking? Some people took little teeny steps. They just were so afraid they couldn't take a step of faith no matter what they tried. And other people were just trucking down. Some people got smart and said, okay, they were giving verbal commands and realized all of a sudden, hey, there's a wall that runs all the way down. Put your hand to the wall and follow it. <laughs> and they didn't give another command until a doorway popped in. Whoops, doorway, look out, because <laughs> your knuckles are going to get wrapped. The adjustments had to be minor. Although rights and lefts and turnarounds and all that were real interesting. How do you get a saint to stop and turn around? See, we're all groping for God. We're all groping you know, with a slight set of blinders on, trying to find out where God is. And our faith grows as we work with the one who's leading us. It got very easy to do the hand signally type stuff, whereas commands were interpreted at first, you know, oh, I don't know if I go really far left or right left. But after a while, it became almost microcosmic, what do you call it, um, minute adjustments. You know, because now people weren't just turning drastically left and drastically right when they were obeying. Baby Christians, when they first obey, are drastic. Older saints learn to just kind of adjust. And you notice, even to walk a straight line, we have to go left a little, right a little, left a little, right a little, forward, left a little. Because nobody walks a perfect forward straight line. <laughs> nobody. And I thought, you know, I'm going to just have to t get us all to think about God's leading a little bit broader here using this little icebreaker that we had to do to say, you know, think about how God leads. He doesn't always lead by the voice. Sometimes he leads by the relationship. Sometimes he leads by the still small voice. Sometimes he just goes tap, tap. Sometimes, like to Saul, he says, kind of hard kicking against the pricks, isn't it? I've been poking you in the back. And you're not paying attention. I'm trying to get you to turn. <laughs> you know, you think about the bit in the horse's mouth, the same thing. Just once you get the horse trained and he's broken and he accepts the bit, all you got to do is tap the strap on the side of his neck and he, he'll turn. This is what we have to become. We have to become that aware when we're being led that just because I'm following God doesn't mean it's scary, doesn't mean that I'm not going to hear, doesn't mean that he isn't going to be talking. But he will talk and he will touch and he will lead. And, and in one more case, a case that happened to me, somebody was trying to get me through a door and they just couldn't figure out how to get me through this door. So they went through the door, grabbed my hand, and yanked me through, <laughs> which was pretty funny because I thought about it. Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes God goes, this one's just not getting it. Okay, here, yank. <laughs> okay, you're through the door. Now let's keep leading you. And those are kind of dramatic interventions of God. You know, Ooh, God led me. No, actually, he grabbed you by the wrist and pulled you. Now you're back to minor adjustment leadings. <laughs> So just realize that God knows how to lead. If I, this little example can demonstrate how we trust and how we lead and how we obey, then at a bigger scale, we can trust God, who's well aware of how we act, react, and do things to adjust us as we go walking in God.